Hi everyone, this is just a really quick intro to this video before I start it properly. I recorded this video on Monday and I realized that some of you probably won't have time for a very chatty video. So for those of you who are pressed on time, what do I mean by this topic? Holding the spirit of winning for team humanity. I basically just mean that it would be great if each and every one of us could really believe in the efforts that a lot of people are putting towards protecting our side. You know, there are a lot of, for example, lawyers who are coming together or scientists who are coming together and they're looking out for the future of humanity. They're putting together cases, they're putting together articles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link you below to a team of amazing lawyers in India who are currently putting together a brilliant case. And I was really inspired by the young lady that I watched and I was amazed at what she's doing. And I'm holding this spirit of winning for her because that's all that I can do. You know, I don't have money or legal skill or ability to do much. But what I can do is I can be positive for the people who are doing amazing work right now. So I'll give you a link below to that video. And I'm super proud of India and what Indians are doing. You know, people in France are doing amazing things. People in Canada are doing amazing things. In every country, people are doing these amazing things where, you know, they're fighting for the rights of team humanity. And we're going to see, as I said in my last video, we're going to see a lot of these efforts take flight when Saturn moves into Aquarius. We're going to see a lot of good things happen there. So that's going to be amazing. And the other thing I wanted to say with this video is that, yes, it's very long and chatty, so you don't have to watch the whole thing. I would rather you watch the link below. It's far more interesting. But if you do stick around, you'll notice that I'm going to use some music for the intro from one of my clients in Europe who sent me that song and I really loved it. So I'm going to put it at the beginning and at the end. And this is one of those kind of cup of tea videos uh, where you can just watch it. And I, the reason I've kind of gone off the track because I was supposed to do Saturn in Capricorn and Aquarius go a bit deeper with those two but I went off the track because one of you in the comments the week before you sounded quite down and that's why I constructed this video so I'm really just trying to construct content that's going to pick you up and that's going to lift you up so hope you like it but you don't have to watch the whole thing as I say watch the link below it's far more interesting all right thanks a lot Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another Astro Chat episode. Now today I was going to talk about Saturn in Capricorn and Aquarius and I was going to liken that to permaculture, but I'm not doing that this week. I'm going to push that to next week because last week one of you wrote such a thought provoking comment and I thought I have to address that in this episode. And I won't put it up on the screen for privacy and all that kind of thing, but it was a really good comment. And you'd mentioned the fact that, look, we're in Kali Yuga and, you know, cycle after cycle, things just keep getting worse. And I agree with that. I, I definitely think we are in Kali Yuga. There's no doubt about it. Kali Yuga is awful. Okay. And maybe in one of the future Astro Chats, if you'd like, I can do an episode about the Yugas and about these epochs and stretches of time that go on really sometimes for hundreds of thousands of years. Okay. So that is the reality of a Yuga. And I do know that we are in one where basically it is thought that the rulers and the leaders of the time are incredibly corrupt people and the good innocent people are being victimized and oppressed and basically jailed, etc., etc. Yes, I know, we are going through Kali Yuga. When did it start? When will it end? These are massive questions. And what I'm going to do in this episode today is I just want to talk about the importance of holding a winning spirit in our minds 
and why we should do that no matter what yuga we're in but why we particularly need to do it now okay so i'm going to give the analogy of playing a game and in england everybody loves to watch a bit of football everybody loves to watch soccer in america i believe you guys call this soccer in england we call it football in australia we have other weird games like Aussie rules and anyway so what's soccer this is the field this is what happens and when you play a game like this there are 11 people on each side I do believe there are the people 11 on each side and you play for about I'm gonna say two hours that might be a long game okay so for the entire two hours that you play this game you go onto that field with a winning spirit don't you you've got one outcome in your mind and that is that we are going to win that me and my team together we're going to do it and mentally you keep yourself high vibe and you keep yourself in a winning state of mind and you believe in yourself and you believe in your teammates and you work together right really important but the part that I'm very interested in is the winning spirit part because sometimes for some of us that's the only part we can do okay and, and I'm going to talk about another game that I believe we are all currently playing we're all currently playing a game that and I'm going to use a soccer field again and I'm going to draw out what's happening on this field so we are playing this game where we've got 13 on this side okay 13 what 13 families who actually I do believe have a massive influence over the rules of the game and they keep changing the rules of the game and many of them are not subject to the game which is kind of interesting as well but now I'm gonna multiply how many people are here let's say if it's 13 families let's say each family has about a thousand members so let's say the other side has got 13,000 people on it could even be 130,000 okay it's not a very big number what's happening on our side what do we have going on now I could be sitting here for quite a while so I don't want you to be sitting here for too long either but let's just pretend that there's lots and lots of dots here and that's going to be let's say 7.9 billion okay so there's quite a few of us on this side and this game is is very peculiar because as i say the rules keep changing these are very clever because number one they keep changing the rules Number two, they keep distracting us. They keep, think, they keep us thinking that the opposition is someone else. So let's say a couple of towers go down in a country. They'll blame that, well, these other people flew from another country and made those things come down. Okay, right. Or they'll get us fighting um, a bug in the sky. Or aliens you know aliens it could be aliens it could Hollywood has been used to show that aliens are um, you know evil or this and that but they're not we're, we're actually the barbarians but that's another story altogether but you can see what's going on here right one of the games um, let's talk about the game of money so they do this thing where they print for us they give us paper okay we get paper kind of like monopoly money right we get these bits of paper 
and we can exchange that and, and we work really hard and we're in these jobs that we don't like and we're very busy doing that and we're doing that to earn this paper which we then pay back to this side so that they can buy real assets like gold mines uh, what else courts banks right times a thousand I mean you guys can use your imagination and fill that in <laughs> there's a lot of things that they take the paper to maintain and that's how this game is it seems now the other thing that they do on this side of things is that they use fear but what do we have on our side and this is the good bit <laughs> because I know this is all very depressing right now we've got love okay and what is a part of love well that is creativity and healing we've got the, we've got this on our side and even though our side might look a little bit empty that we've just got paper and we've got love and they've got all these other things this whole thing really reminds me of Krishna and how now it's Duryodhan Duryodhan have I got that right I'm not very good at remembering these names guys but I believe it was Duryodhan who went to Krishna and who and Arjuna went too and I believe Duryodhan sat at Krishna's uh, head while Arjuna sat at Krishna's feet and both of them wanted help for this massive war that's coming up right Duryodhan says to Krishna you know we really need help what, what can you do Krishna says that well I can give you an army of a million people or you could take me armless and Duryodhan is over the moon happy he's like oh my god yes I and mean, what does that sound like does that does that sound like he's on this side it really does doesn't it he's very much on this side and Arjuna is overjoyed because of course he wants Krishna he wants love he wants God on his side you know and that is the game that we are all here playing and the reason I wanted to draw it in this way and to explain it in this way is that it is like a game it is like a soccer game now before I said that you know you have 11 players on each side and it's two hours and for the entire two hours you got to hold that I'm a, we're gonna win spirit okay now let's say I mean this game for each one of us is let's say 80 years okay that's quite a long duration to hold that winning perspective but do you know what I'm I am committing now the rest of my life to holding love and a winning spirit for team humanity that's what I want to do I want to see us win and I want to see us you know of course come together and, and create things in a way that's fair this isn't going to go on for much longer this thing of you know and, and, and that's why this is another thing this is so, so important that you mentioned Kali Yug because one of the reasons that I think that there's so many of us that there's 7.9 billion of us if that's correct if that figure is even correct I'm not sure because it's coming from the UN so now I doubt everything that's coming my way but let's say it's correct I genuinely think that this many people have incarnated to see love win like we we've come because we're gonna see our side win we're gonna see our side evolve a lot of people are predicting the fact that there's going to be less population okay going forward in what time frame exactly again that's, that's I don't know but one of the things I think is that this extremely unjust game because we're all waking up to it we're all seeing it for what it is and 
we are choosing love, we're choosing humanity, we're choosing nature, we're choosing all the good things, right? We're waking up to it. I think a new earth is dawning and I think these games, the way it's been, they won't be being played out anymore. And the reason I think we're going to have less population, say in the future, 100, 200, 300 years from now type thing, which people are predicting and talking about, I think that's going to happen because a lot of the people who like this side, and many of these are conditioned in that way to like all of this, um, because we know that life's not about, you know, getting a great job and buying a Porsche. Okay, it is that for some people, but <laughs> that's fine if that's you. But like, I'm not saying that's bad, but like, the thing is, that's not actually what, what we came to do. I, I really think that we've come to, to create the new earth, to, to change this. And one of the reasons for the population going down, I haven't got there yet, have I? Is that the new earth is going to be so boring <laughs> for the people who like all of this. It's going to be so boring because the new earth is going to be about creativity and it's going to be about healing. It's going to be about becoming very skilled. It's going to be about learning. It's going to be about you know, if you want to become a brilliant salsa dancer, you can. Like you know, it's kind of it's going to be very enjoyable for people like me. But that I know a lot of corporate types who and I've seen them when I was in London and I lived and worked with these people and there are people who just if they're not in their corporate environment doing the thing that they do when they leave that they get sick and they get bored and, and they they don't know what to do with themselves I've seen these people and that's how that is and there will be other dimensions for them to reincarnate back to but I think it's so important that we hold in our mindset, we hold a winning spirit in our mindset that we are going to win. We're not going to let this continue. We see it. We're waking up to it. We know, you know, and the more we wake up to it and awakening, this is the thing about awakening. It's hard. And it is really, really hard for some people. I understand that because when you turn the lights up, you see all the dirt and there's a lot of evil that's gone on and that is going on right now. Okay, it's bad. And, and this is the pain of awakening because the more light quotient that you have, when you turn the lights up really high, yeah, you see it and it's 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 very distressing it is bad it's not good so i understand why people have a fear of awakening it's also why it can't be rushed um, one of the things that the the lovely commentator has written is that yeah you fear for your young ones and this is why i wanted to make this video good we're at 15 minutes yeah one of the things i wanted to say is that um i think for parents it's very very difficult right now and how do you do this? How do you, you know, and you know all of this, right? You know the evil and how bad it is and you know. And what I would just say is protect your children as much as you can. Because right now, for your children, you are their world. Not all of this. They don't know about the banking system and the creature from Jekyll Island and, you know, the 13 families that set everything up and Cecil Rhodes and you know, the, the build of the education system. And they don't know all this stuff. They don't know all of that. So don't mm, expose them to it. Let them have a childhood. You be their world and you be, you know, positive f for them kind of thing. They don't, they, children don't need to know all this stuff. And it's wonderful for a child to just have a childhood and not know, not see the news, not, not watch all of this stuff. And then when they grow up and they become of an age where they are curious, they're reading books, they're learning, you know, they're, they're figuring things out and you'll know how to teach them as well. It's, it's just intuitive. You'll know what they'll be able to consume and what they won't be able to consume. But if you've got small children, you are their world. Okay, they don't know about banking. They know about mum and dad. That's what they know. They see you. 
they see you and if you're happy and if you've got that you know that that spirit of that we're gonna win you know and I, I just think that's really important so to my lovely viewer out there I'm sending you lots of love and to, and to your young ones as well and yeah just use your intuition you'll be guided what to do all the way you know all the answers are there but I'm wishing everyone well I'm wishing everyone keep and maintain this spirit of winning that we're gonna win okay believe in our side and yeah I, that's that's what I'm doing that's what I'm busy doing with all my days right now so thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time with this faith we will be able to hew out of the mountain